in violation of Nuremberg Principle Number 6, the globalist criminals who have commandeered the American government wage naked aggression, thinly veiled, now against several countries. First, on, first against Afghanistan, then against Iraq, now against Pakistan, and that will be escalated into a full-scale war, and then against Libya, and God help the nations of Europe who become the accomplices in crime of these hegemonic wars of aggression. It was back in the 1930s, Hilaire Belloc spoke of the future resurgence of Islam and how they will rise up and attack Europe again. I read about this in the 1970s. And I remember the revelation made by Our Lady to Sister Elena Aiello. And she spoke of how regions of Italy will be utterly devastated by, a, by a North African Arab attack. And already back in the 1880s, St. John Bosco spoke of that evil which will come from the south. So I put the question to my friends and I said, what possibly could stir up the Arab peoples to such vengeance against Italy? And the question was taken to that privileged soul and the answer was given because Italy will create a provocation that will produce this response. Well, first, Italy has allowed foreign powers to use bases on its territory to bombard Libya. So we no longer need to wonder why the Muslims of Northern Africa will be itching for revenge against this country. And when the Italian people find themselves being slaughtered in a jihad, in an Islamic holy war, they will have the government to thank for that. And so will the French. And so will the British. And the British need not even worry about enemy forces wearing turbans invading their country because that invasionary force is already there. I have been living in London on and off now for six years. And there are nothing but turbans and Islamic veils everywhere. Our Lady foretold that these countries will undergo dreadful bloodshed. And when there will be a financial collapse, when the French are fighting the French and the Italians the Italians, when, the, when, the, when, the, when, when Britain is totally crippled, then the Jihad will strike. And it will strike in Italy, in France, in England, in Germany. And when Europe is overturned in chaos and bloodshed, then Russia will come in to pick up the shattered pieces of Europe. Well, as if it wasn't enough already to insult Islam and its prophet Muhammad, now Muslims themselves are the target. An advertisement in the New York City subway draws comparison between jihad, that is a Muslim's duty to defend his religion, 
and savagery. Well, the ad that's been posted in 10 underground stations across the city urges people to be on the side of, quote, the civilized man in his war with the savage. At the end, it asks people to support Israel and to defeat jihad. The of course, I have mixed feelings about it. You know, it's disgusting, it's despicable. I have to laugh as well. You know, the, the use of the word savage is just so, like, classically colonialist and everything that she really does a lot more harm to her cause than good. I find it incredibly offensive. I find it um, racist. I find it an incitement to intolerance. Uh, I think it's terrible to use such horrible, offensive language to tell lies about other people. That's definitely the most offensive part about the whole thing. We are definitely not savages. We haven't done anything savage. There's some people in the entire religion that are like that, but it doesn't single everyone out. It's not just everyone in the Islam religion. It's just a few people that made mistakes based on what they heard, like what they believed in. Hello, everyone. Welcome to GGN. Today is Wednesday, September 26, 2012, and I'm Darko. All right, so uh, just a quick comment on that video. Uh, if you go in there, the links will be posted in YouTube's video description on this video right here. And uh, in there, there's actually a part where um, they have a lawyer. I believe it's like a Jewish lawyer. And uh, he gives his, basically, his say on what, uh, you know, well, you know, I don't see what the big deal is. Uh, you know, this is our First Amendment, right? And um, the problem with that is, is that last video, the anti-Islam video, Innocence of Muslims, uh, they made a mockery of the Prophet Muhammad. An entire religion was uh, supposedly, at first, reportedly done by um, an is uh, an American Israeli or a Jewish uh, a Jewish guy that received a lot of Jewish money. Now, whether that was true doesn't really matter. Um, it was a divide and conquer strategy. We know that um, usually Zionists that's what they do, and that's what the New World Order, the powers that be, use. So uh, it's just kind of funny though because. Um, uh, like they made us, uh, this Mark Glenn, I think that's his name, uh, is uh, posed the question by the um, Press TV correspondent. And, you know, she basically asked him, well, what would happen if Muslims try to put up an ad saying, you know, tying the uh, uh, Israel with being a terrorist state or a sponsor of terrorism? And he said, well, that would never happen, of course. It would never happen, right? So they like the, the, the lawyer, if you look in the video, they like to play that stupid game, right? And if you go out to California, you can't actually criticize Israel in the United States and California now. They're actually passing a law that says you cannot criticize Israel. If you do, you'll be deemed anti-Semitic. So, there you go. Intelligence report controversial defeat jihad ads could be headed to Chicago. So they let me to see it. Like in California, they try that. That's uh, uh, f uh, chilling free speech, as they say. Um, then in New York, they try it over here with a defeat jihad ad and then the litmus test and they bring it home into the midwest to chicago so that's why they would do it so i have a lot to cover in these two videos i'm going to cover the middle east and uh, syria iran and that uh, cover the uh, iranian president's speech and then get into turkey and uh, other parts of the world mali journalists arrested for defacing anti-muslim ad in new york subway an egyptian american activist was arrested by nypd on tuesday in charge of criminal mischief and graffiti for spray painting an advertisement in a New York subway station that had been viewed uh, as hateful to Muslims. And it's uh, interesting because there was actually a useful idiot that uh, that got in a scuffle with her and actually shielded the poster with her own body. Uh, so yeah, she's been chastised by both pro-Israel Anti-Defamation League and the Southern uh, Poverty Law Center. And actually there was an advertisement that was uh, placed in the Florida election campaigns <laughs> Uh, with uh, Nazi Yahoo appearing in the ad in Florida. He says here in the ad, the fact is that every day that passes, Iran, Iran gets closer and closer to a nuclear bomb. The world tells Israel, wait, there's still time. And I say, wait for what? Wait until when? And a voiceover at the end underscores the Prime Minister's message, the world needs American strength, not apologies. They're saying uh, Israel needs American strength, not apologies. So it aired in Miami, and it says here it costs Secure America $1 million, an organization confirmed to Fox. It says here Jerry Thompson from the advisory board member for Secure America Now says he's a powerful messenger with a powerful message who the American people believe. 
So hopefully, just remember what happened, what was just uh, talked about in those first videos about jihad and all that. It'll tie in mostly to the second video. So wake up, Obama, Iranian uh, barbarians want blood. The Wall Street Journal thinks it's time to take Ahmadinejad seriously. So goes on and says that, um, note that the word eliminated, the journal writes, when Iranians talk about Israel, this intention of the final solution keeps coming up. This isn't an isolated incident, they said. Uh, the Ayatollah in Iran uh, recently called Israel a cancerous tumor that should be cut and will be cut. The U.S. always denounces these pronouncements, but that's not the same thing as taking them seriously. The journal complains civil society sometimes fail to grasp that not everybody behaves in a civilized or rational fashion. The tragic lesson of history is that sometimes barbarians mean what they say. So Ahmadinejad defends Holocaust denial at United Nations. Israel walks out, U.S. sticks around to listen. So they're saying that uh, the U.N. Uh, video confirmed that U.S. representatives intended the entire speech. Uh, but from RT, they're saying that <clears throat> the U.S. delegation wasn't present in the chamber. He decried the current abysmal situation in the world, saying it resulted from the self-proclaimed centers of, the power, of power who have entrusted themselves to the devil. I don't know, they have a little photo shot of them not there, so... But the reason for it, uh, they say, was because of what? Because they will have the platform of the UN General Assembly on Yom Kippur. So this is what I saw, right? In the alternative news world and through YouTube coming through the subscription feeds, Ahmadinejad pushes New World Order. And when I look back at it, he never actually said New World Order. He said New Order. And when you go back to what uh, how RT covered it, and in um, other sources, what he's calling for, what he's saying is a less centralized system that's run by the same powers that be. Um, he said uh, he's calling for the creation of a new, less polarized world order. I do not believe the system of empires has reached the end of the road. The world can no longer see an emperor commanding it. Statement last year referred to the current international powers as the same slave masters who imposed colonialism for over four centuries upon the world. So this is the thing, you know, he goes on and says that uh, the West never accepts the legitimacy of Iran's 1979 Islamic Revolution. My thing is, is it's like everywhere else, you know, every other country, whether it's Russia, whether it's um, somewhere in South America, whether it's Iran that seems to be a sovereign state, they all have police states, they all have big brother police states and they crack down on dissent and there's no freedom. So, I mean, it's not better anywhere else, any better anywhere else, you know, when you think about it like that. Um, I and mean, then they all want control over their people. I guess what he's calling for is not having just one um, hardcore uh, faction that just controls the complete the entire planet. So you know, you know me. I'm for a stateless society. I wish we didn't have any governments where people were able to voluntarily form their own governments. And if they wanted to opt out of these quote democracies, then you don't have to pay their taxes. They don't want to support it. That's their voice of dissent, right? No, the only voice of dissent is that oh, you can vote for candidate B or you or you don't have to vote but you won't have a say so see you can see the racket of it but yeah it's uh it's pretty crazy because I don't know you know it's like I don't know if this guy I mean Iran could actually be a bunch of people that are uh, for the most part sovereign but they're headed up by what they're headed up by possibly a new world order a cultist uh, not even a puppet he may not even know what he's doing um an infiltrator or something like that way up at the top you know to go on there and make all these uh, incendiary remarks and they just play the whole nuclear card and I mean I honestly think they have nuclear weapons but at the same time I think that they have the right to possess them to defend themselves and their sovereignty but at the same time are they in the hands of the West you know I don't know it just seems like they all are so as far as a new world order goes it's uh, there's just an order and it's constantly changing and evolving so is there a new world order coming it's already here what he's saying is the same thing that uh, Romanovs are probably saying in Russia, which is pass the fucking ball off to somebody else, to another f uh, family, referring to the Rothschilds, of course. So we'll continue in part two of this news bulletin. Sorry, I wasn't able to go, just keep moving and moving and moving. Uh, we'll do it in the next video. We'll just fly through articles and that and tie it all together. Yeah, we'll start off with Egypt. Uh, Clinton reassuring Egypt, Morzai over U.S. aid. They're basically saying that the debt relief package, despite recent anti-protests, will go through. So U.S. aid was threatened when their embassies were attacked.
But after Egypt received the bribe money, Clinton goes on and says, you better keep channels open with Israel, i.e. don't attack them. Thank you.